So Asbel, what are your comments after the race? Was it a typical championships race as you have been expected? Well, good. The race went on as I expected. We were really competitive. Uh, it was a hard race, especially the last lap was a little faster. And uh, my comment is that the race was high and it was tough and really competitive. Thank you. Silas, what is your opinion? You are debuting at the World Championships first time. My opinion is um, very ugly because this is my first time in World Championships after I started my World of Athletics last year. I can see things are going on very well. We are it's very cool. So the starting silver is not bad. But now <coughs> the focus is just only to concentrate on other things. As my colleague will call Andrew Ben is title in Moscow. That's in 2013. Uh, we are happy as Kenyans to be the first thing to get gold and silver for the first time in history. So we are happy and congratulations. Thank you. And the comment from our bronze medalist, Matt? Um, just happy to be a part of this World Championships and represent my country um, as best as I can. And competing against these guys up here is just an honor as it is. And um, just never gave up that last lap and was happy to come away with some hardware. Thank you. Questions, please? Here. Both gentlemen. Uh, questions to Asbel. Asbel, um, I want to ask you about your rivalry with Silas. Uh, Silas beat you at the uh, Kenyan trials. Uh, when did you did you think that this was going to be a battle between the two of you at the championships? And when did you think you were going to win the race? Well, good. When you talk about rivalry, I mean our rivalry is really high. I mean, keeps on uh, competition in Kenya be uh, a little bit tight and tough and so our rifle is, is healthy and I enjoy that. Thank you. Let's continue with John there. Uh, as well, since you uh, finished on, in the race in Beijing in second, but then were elevated after a positive test for Ramsey, did you feel any extra pressure or expectations to win this title on the track uh, and not depend on some other uh, circumstance to win? Yes, that's really what I have wanted to do. I mean, to win the championships on the track, live on the track. Uh, and like the other one, I was uh, promoted to call uh, while I was a silver medalist. So it kept me motivation, and uh, I'm happy. Uh, as expression to my fans, uh, uh, I pay them through. Thank you. David there? Just a follow up, Aspel, on that. I mean, the feeling of coming across the line first here tonight, being the world champion. Try once again, please. Given what happened in, in Beijing, that somebody else crossed the finish line first and not you, you were really the champion tonight. You were the man that came in first. How did that feel? Well, it is, uh, I got a feeling that I would have uh, caught in Beijing uh, two years ago, three years back. Uh, I'm really happy for this and gets me motivation ahead of the London Olympic Games and to go and try defend the title and win naturally on track. Thank you. John, again. Um, Matthew, uh, two questions actually. When did you really think you might have a shot at sitting where you are right now? And secondly, can you explain a little bit about the influence of your father, Matt, who made two uh, U.S. Olympic teams on your career? Um, I started uh, getting confident with about 150 to go when um, some of the guys were coming back because uh, they made such a hard move with about 300 to go. And, um, I just kept fighting and um, found myself now, instead of losing ground, gaining ground. And so I just kept fighting and kept picking off one guy, another guy. And so about 150 to go, um, I felt like I could position myself with a good chance to get a medal. And uh, having my dad as um, a two-time Olympian and four-time U.S. champ, obviously, um, runs in the family. And it's great to have him giving me um, such good advice, um, you know, on and off the track when I go home. And so... Um, like, like I mentioned in a lot of stories before, a lot of kids get bedtime stories, and I got uh, running stories as a kid, so um, running is obviously a big time thing in my life, and um, just it's great to just share this kind of success with my father. Thank you, Paul, again. As well, as well uh, I 
I've read that you, one of your heroes is Michel Garouge. Can you tell me uh, why he was influential to you? Have you ever met him? And uh, what did you admire about him? Well, I could have to, to, to watch uh, Garouge race in 2004 Olympic Games uh, when he raced with Penalaga. Uh, I'd really admire, I'd want to run like uh, a champion. In, yes, I, I'm still working on that. To actually be a hero in the men and the, the distance, the 1500. Thank you. More questions? Nicolas? Marcel, uh, Beijing was a pretty fast race tonight, it was pretty slow. Um, your tactics have been sometimes questionable. What kind of pace do you feel the more comfortable to you? Uh, currently, uh, when I came to these championships, I was a little bit confident because uh, during my training, I had done a 2.44 at altitude for at 1,200. And I was ready whether the race is going to be faster or slow, and I, I could pass, I could just take. Thank you. More questions? Here in the first row, please. This one's for Aspel. In the mix zone, Phyla said he'd never seen uh, Matt before, and was surprised, you know, with how well he did. So had, were you familiar with Matt? Did you see a semi semifinal? And what do you think about an American getting the bronze? Well, um, I wasn't surprised at all uh, because I saw the guy uh, win the, the sprint uh, semi-final heat. Uh, the race was tough, including uh, I Amin mean, Lalu, the defending champion, uh, Congela, and the other guys. I mean, he managed to hold them off, and I knew the car was going to be strong. So, together with Silas, the current world leader at the moment, so I knew I knew it was going to be a uh, tough race. Thank you. Paul again. Asper, again, uh, Asper, I wondered how will you celebrate? What, what do you do to celebrate uh, when you get back to Kenya uh, with this gold medal? Coming back to Kenya like any other winner, uh, first of all, I have, I have to race in Zurich and, and, and in Brussels. When I go to Kenya and, and, and have my medal, I mean, celebrate together with my family. <laughs> John? To Silas, you had run uh, won a number of the Diamond League races and a number of uh, publications, including Track and Field News, picked you to win. Did you feel uh, any expectations to try to win, or what was your attitude coming into Daegu, just to do your best, or exactly what? My first priority of coming to Daegu was to win, but uh, all in all, it's not go well. But you must remember, in athletics, you win today, you lose tomorrow. But what I, I intend to do is to be focused, because this is not last the rest in my life. Because also it's the first time in championships, to race after this, my second year in athletics. And then I've been showing good impression to the world of athletics. I'm not disappointed with it. Because Next day's Olympics, I must be. I, I, I must focus on my training so that I can do the Olympics next year. Okay, thank you, Nicholas. One more question. I said, what What did you learn in, from Berlin? Precisely, could you explain us what you learned from that from that experience two years ago? I went on and sat down with my coach. I mean, I watched back the races I have raced in, in Osaka 2007, uh, finished fourth, and also in Tallinn, finished fourth. Uh, we went on and rectified uh, uh, before the World Championship. Uh, we went on and trained, I mean, learn, learning to run in front uh, or next near to the front, and that's what I applied tonight and managed to win another call medal. Okay, here in the first row again. Asko, despite the two gold medals, your PR is 331. Do you feel any pressure to get under 330? Um, yes, yes. Uh, currently now, I'm having Olympic call and, and being a world champion. Uh, my time, I'm, I'm really disappointed with 331, and that's what I want to do something faster than that. Thank you. Elias, and this is the last question. Yeah, congratulations, Aspel, and all of you. This is already 
by far Kenya's best performance at the World Championship. <coughs> from, from one gold medal in Helsinki, now Kenya has already six and uh, looking forward to maybe two more tomorrow. What has been different in training in camp from Nairobi all the way to, to Daegu? What have you done? What has the team done differently? Well, I could. Uh, uh, when you mentioned of Kenya, Kenyans improving, they started w way back in Osaka when we won some medals uh, and, and in Berlin also. And so the, the competition is healthy. We have the girls winning medals and the guys are trying to equalize and to be the same level. So uh, we have our own competition with the girls also. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Will we see your revenge race still after the season between Silas and Alpel? Will we race together in some competition? Yes, we race with Aspel in Zurich, <coughs> and maybe a little more late, but the, the calendar is enjoying the next reality and volume, and my intention in the remaining uh, Diamond Leagues or Golden Leagues is to run faster and to arrest this part in relation I saw to my colleagues because they were expecting him to win cold, but all in all, they are not bad. After a spell winning cold, it's a game, it's a better, it's a good friend of mine, it's a training match of mine. So I'm not disappointed because it's my first time in World Championships, but to start in silver is not bad. But what I must look forward to is to run faster than I had done in the other years. That's last year. Okay, thank you very much. Big congratulations once again. Alpha, keep up. Silas, keep like that.